Okay, we are getting into uncharted territory. We have a discussion all together now. And, um, and thank you for staying until the almost the very end of this seminar. So uh, I had the impression that we were um, barely starting to talk together at the end of Titus and Alice's presentation, so that's very good. So this is what we are getting into now, a uh, discussion together. And uh, if you looked at the program, uh, we were planning first to start to talk about um, the reality of the status as a student researcher or teacher researcher at the moment. So we'd like you to share your experiences and then we'll see also what's happening here in France. Alice, I think, gave us enough hints about the difficulty of teaching, researching, doing lots of different jobs and also trying to figure out what was the main thing we would like to do in the end. Trying to do everything at the same time, as you know, of course, already is very tiresome and uh, it's a mix of joy and frustrations. And um, as it seems like the whole uh, research um, scene, if I can use that word, even if it might not be the most accurate word, uh, is increasing, growing, and this is why we decided to go uh, with this uh, specific seminar to meet, to be together, and to hopefully uh, lay the foundations of a proper network in the near future to carry on the process of um, making something together about research in typography. So, do you want to say something, Cherry, for a start? Or? Uh, well, it might be good to ask first of all if there are uh, questions or comments that people might want to continue from earlier. And if you do so, you will be on camera. We're getting this, the thumbs up that everything is okay. Uh, we really want to avoid it being talking heads. Uh, the, the thought behind the working seminars is very much that they are as much collaborative and open as possible. That's the reason why we have a limit on uh, the number of people we want so we can all share the coffee breaks and the lunch and discussion in the room. There's been enough space for everyone. Uh, so it will, we have our own ideas and we talk with a small number of people we might be making plans, but it's a really dangerous thing for people who have a lot of overlap in their way of thinking to make plans without getting feedback uh, from others in the community, uh, and especially the feedback that might say, you're an idiot, you've missed this big thing that you really should have thought about, which tends to happen to me a lot. Uh, the missing bit. Uh, perhaps not so much people telling me that I've missed it before I have the opportunity to fix it. So we'd really like your feedback on what you think uh, might be interesting to work in, uh, what might help address the issues of uh, this point of recognizing the work that goes into people doing research, or what kind of research do you think might be most interesting to prioritize in any initiatives going forward? Or what is burning in your mind if you are thinking, oh, these people doing these PhDs, they sound like interesting ways of actually keeping your brain active. I might be interested in doing this, but I'm thinking of the, that might be stopping me. That would be a really good thing to air. Nobody say something. Ah, please, yes. Um, I just have a small comment to make about things that have been said earlier in a sense that um, getting questions like people doing research and not knowing that uh, the PhD research, um, for instance, is also taking place in other places in the world. Um, in that sense, I just want to make a remark. Don't you think that we are just a very young, um, how should I say, um, discipline? I mean, doing a PhD in typeface design or even typography, I think 10 years, if it's 10 years, if I count myself, having finished in 2009, um, doing the PhD on Tibetan, it's, it's only 10 years. And I think we need to grow still a bit further in order to find other locations in different areas to even see whether maybe similar research have been undertaken. And it's only 
because some people already have done the research now the past 10 years that that knowledge has been available, not necessarily like that the texts can be read, but then the word is out that people are doing research in different places and maybe it's only then that other people might know, hmm, there's a similar interest in other places of the world. So um, having said that, I think it's also, and I'm just speaking for myself, um, I am aware that some of the um, areas of research that I conducted have maybe been undertaken in smaller amounts in other places, but they were written in their own native language and typeset in their own um, native uh, script. So in that sense, maybe it would be good um, at some point to develop maybe a platform that also those publications get translated or maybe being public in whatever area of research we are undertaking. And then in that sense, have like a uh, community so that it's like cross-referencing each other so that people who are for instance in my case in uh, Mongolia or in Tibet or in Bhutan and they know about what's happening in Europe um, not knowing that those archives were there it's the same thing that in my case I didn't know until I was going there that some of the material is located over there and I think maybe that's something that the whole community now needs to develop further to actually having access to the information being made more visible um, and not necessarily all the theses, like meaning the theoretical explanations of the research itself, but just yeah, having it translated, even in, as, as you already mentioned, like European languages, like I don't read or know any Finnish or Norwegian, and I know that there have been, sorry, some uh, typographical publications on uh, Western, typography and type design being written in Norwegian or in uh, Slovenian and if you have those, those translated into like a general maybe it can be English can be French I don't know but something uh, so that it's like um, just made available so that's just a, a remark that I wanted to say one that we are a fairly young discipline so I think it needs further development and then maybe that the whole community need to maybe communicate a bit better also to have access to the material and locations in the different parts of the world. So, but it's just a remark or a question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That was it. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, very interesting um, conference. Um, I was thinking, I, I don't want to oversimplify the, the situation, but um, I was thinking that maybe because the research on, in typography that we were looking uh, at uh, today and uh, yesterday is um, uh, in the scope of the humanities, um, most of the research we've seen uh, is a bit retrospective. Uh, you know, we are. Um, working on archive, on the history of uh, our own discipline, and of course it's extremely important. But uh, I think that uh, for the future uh, we should not um, forget that uh, at first we are all designers uh, and it's important to uh, um, design our, our own way to uh, research things, you know? Because um, uh, this model of the humanities, there are, you know, academic uh, rules and uh, a system which, which is, which it's okay, it works, it's, it's good. But um, there is, we have the chance of, uh, uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a young discipline, uh, it's a rather small network, uh, there are many, many things to do. And I think that we should invent new formats rather than uh, using the whole formats of the, of the university because uh, the university is already um, uh, witnessing that uh, at some point it doesn't work anymore uh, to, to uh, um, you know, research to, uh, which will be more prospective to think about the, the, the goal of what we are doing and how it could change r the things for the future. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, uh, we have to 
look in both direction, I mean. Uh, retrospective and prospective. And uh, I hope that in the future we will see more uh, practice-based research and uh, research uh, through typography or by typography, uh, I don't know, but um, uh, to invent new things, new things for the future, for the readers, and uh, to, to um, cross the boundaries of our disciplines, because it's important to, to know where we are, what's uh, our history, but it's really important to, uh, to um, broaden our scope, I guess. So it, it was just a, uh, a remark, but, uh, but it was okay. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> and you are all doing a, such, a, such a great job. Thank you. Um, just um, to kind of um, um, continue this line of, of thought that we are very young and I'm personally very young in this um, um, area, I just wanted to say how informative and um, um, and, and positive and, and influential I think these, this kind of um, meeting and, and idea exchange is because I feel like um, I was exposed to all the information that I will never be able to expose to be exposed to otherwise, um, and maybe this will be because the discipline is is just growing, and you or us and we are the people who are kind of defining it as we go because things are not very strict and not kind of very straight science yet. Maybe this would be a good format to actually create those definitions, create those guidelines. Um, I think we had this kind of funny um, uh, talk about. Um, how to format footnotes for articles and how many options you have and how I think most of us just kind of find the way that best works for our articles and just stay consistent. But you know, maybe even the, the very small things and difficulties that e each one of you um, comes across throughout this very specific and unique and kind of interdisciplinary um, um, process could actually that could be like our database to grow as a discipline and it will be in like an educating um, thing as it is as itself if it makes any sense <laughs> I think in response to this discipline being very young I don't think if it's that young I think it's much more organized but uh, Fiona did her PhD in 80s there are uh, there is a three volume book on the, uh, typography of the Vanagari uh, by Naik and uh, with regard to Latin script there are much more sources written about which uh, in a way can be used to write the history of any other script as a sort of platform and looking at the objects it is much younger than a lot of other uh, principal uh, uh, disciplines such as the history of printing but I don't think if it's that young for us to say that you know these are just the first steps and it might take take him much more to reach other places i think there are there are i think what what i and i think others refer to the fact that i find it young is that it's actually younger generation knowing that it's there and they can apply for doing research somewhere and i think in previous examples that you gave um, it's not necessarily in practice-based research that they were undertaken. So it was from a different, I don't know the procedures, how they applied for funding and how they actually managed to do the publications. Of course, in the case of Fiona, I know, but or, or, or I know the experience. Um, but I think what I refer to that it's people today, they know or they can build upon yeah, the generation now that has been like like you and like others like been to the process today how to apply for it and then to exchange who to contact to get the funding or maybe which department to go to um, which people you get connected to um, and I think that's a network that I, I believe Fiona never had in her time oh, and that's something that it's like so yeah, indeed yeah. it's like growing yeah, yeah. thing now it's the community. There is, there is a little bit of a difference there that a lot of the early reference you make 
are work done like a Katerina's PhD, which might have a typographic or type focus, but in an institution that was not a typographic institution. So Fiona's PhD was at SOAS. Uh, it happened to be on type. SOAS didn't really describe itself as a typographic uh, institution. And I think the idea of a, a field coming into existence, rather than being a collection of lone wolves operating in caves, is when you have an institutional environment that can put a, a sign on that says, this is what we think our interpretation of the discipline is. Uh, the same thing happens still to these days, because typography might mean different things in different locations, different languages, different institutions. Even Reading doesn't have a very defined idea of what typography is, and it has the tautology of its own name of the, of the department, which is a, a not very good attempt at solving that problem. Uh, but the idea of having a location which at least uh, tries to define the field is a first step. And on that metric, we are relatively young, again, because I don't think Reading should count for much, exactly because it is a very early case. Uh, so you might have PhDs coming from Reading from the late 70s, uh, very few of them. But it takes quite a bit of time until you begin to see other institutions declaring themselves as doing research in type and typography. And I think that is the critical point, where you move away from a singular institution that defines itself by being the exception to what can be described as the beginning of a trend. Uh, and in that respect, we are uh, young because at the beginning of my career, 25 years ago, there weren't many places. And if you were in Portugal or in France and you want to do the kind of thing, there are very few places where you could do this and not feel an outsider or a guest. Uh, whereas now there is uh, a multiplicity of options. Uh, and yes, it might not work perfectly and there might be issues about defining the field or the relationship of the student, the supervisor and so on. Uh, or a lot of historical problems like all the weird systems that only the Germans understand about the very different kinds of schools and the relationships they have between them and so on. Uh, on the other hand, there is this very strong drive towards a more global understanding of educational structures. Uh, that's why Europe means something bigger than the continent. The same way that Eurovision includes countries that are very much not on the continent. The Bologna process, which started as a European thing, is very much not a European thing. And you might go to institutions in Korea or Southeast Asia, and the Bologna process is a thing that they live and breathe because they want their bachelor's or their master's graduates to have a meaningful parity with other institutions, which has all sorts of problems of its own if you're trying to build one model. But it means that there is an emergent international language for what studies at a certain level are. The same way that I can actually give you subject independent descriptors for what a master's graduate needs to be able to do, uh, and I can sort of do it for what a PhD graduate needs to be able to do. And then I can walk backwards from that and say, then what, what do I need to do to that person to get them there? And we come into your point, which has to do with, well, what resources are available. And the finished thesis doesn't tell me how that person got there. It didn't just magically appear. Uh, what are the resources that you need to support someone to build those skills? What are the exercises, the training material? What are the stages in terms of workshops or whatever you need to get someone, especially if coming from a practical <coughs> background, to build the writing or critical skills in order to do it. How do you do a literature review? How do you do referencing? And how do you understand the difference between using someone's research for your own advancement or actually just plagiarizing that research, which is actually not a very easy thing to just explain in one session. You need quite a bit of practice. Uh, the idea of having different levels of zoom in your perspective. Uh, scaling out to see the context, zooming in to see a specific act of practice. That, again, is something that nobody's born with, but it's not rocket science in the sense that you can actually build training resources or training environments for it, which are then transferable from one institution to the next, and that will certainly feed into the next agenda we have in mind. Uh, so I think we are young in the sense that if you tell me I'm based in XYZ country and I want to figure out how do I build the skills to be a researcher in typography, I cannot easily point you 
to three or four or five books or publications that address this specifically. The, I cannot, uh, well, I can maybe point you to some, like you know, Ricardo's chapter on methodology for how to capture images and approach working with original materials. Uh, but that is incidental that it is out there uh, because as bodies that foster this kind of research, we haven't produced public resources for this. And that is a deficit on ours and a deficit on the systems we work for because they are geared to be inward looking, to produce things only for our own students or for our own things. And the systems the institutions want to use are closed systems like Blackboard and so on that are impenetrable to the outsiders. So I think there is a very clear boundary between the wider community that we operate in and have in mind and the institutional environment we work in, which is always inward looking towards its, it, the system that actually produces its revenue, uh, unfortunately, to, to somebody has to, to pay those bills. And I think the wider argument that if you put the, as many resources out there as possible to be as open as possible, that will actually be a good business plan in the long term is a relatively difficult argument to make in the current educational environment, at least in the UK. I still think it needs to be made and you can also say, so did I'll do it anyway um, because you believe in what you're doing, but it means that for some things you are going against the trend. That's a long response. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, maybe I will answer uh, in some ways to Thomas' remark, but uh, unfortunately he's gone. Uh, it's funny because the words he used were retrospective and prospective. Uh, I remember using basically the same words 10 years ago, at least when we were starting getting into research um, with, with Barbara and, and Patrick, because we were discussing uh, how working with historical resources and uh, um, this topic also uh, relies to the difficulty of finding a, a good publication uh, nowadays. When I mean, humanities model uh, in publishing is quite uncertain for uh, our young or old discipline. And um, so we, we here we are thinking about developing uh, a specific uh, publication platform uh, online because things need to get out, you know, and the, the problem is that if we wait for any academic journal to accept any paper, it takes years to work on a journal uh, project. I mean, we tried here several times with, with Patrick uh, a few years ago. Sometimes we get bored or frustrated. Say, yeah, let's do a, a new magazine or new journal about research, blah, blah. So. We have fun for three months and then we, we get swallowed again into the realities of teaching and uh, this life. And then we try again. So we are still not there. And uh, of course, I think maybe there's a way of finding or inventing a model of publishing and also of using historical resources. And uh, I have a, a great fantasy of creating some kind of interactive tool for working, teaching, using such resources. And I think um, it's possible to invent a, some kind of yeah, digital uh, workbench. From this workbench, you can uh, solicitate different um, uh, documents, different texts. And this is something that I have in mind. Of course, it, it, it needs to, to, to be yeah, we need to, to set up a prototype. And when I see Patrick doing this tablet, as you saw yesterday, and um, that gives me ideas, but trying to invent the same tool for researchers in, in history of typography and, and type design, that would be interesting, but I cannot elaborate. Um, but this is in the back of my mind, and this is also why, uh, as a uh, someone who made his PhD in Reading too, too because uh, this was the only place uh, in 2010 I could go to do uh, research in history of typography. Yeah, and um, I haven't published anything since I finished in 2014 because 
the model of publication for me is as is, yes, it's important, uh, maybe more important than the publication itself. Uh, I was not in a hurry to publish, and I'm, I'm I should publish. And uh, I've been thinking for years about, okay, how to publish this kind of PhD because it's a lot of materials and uh, it's not really sexy as the way it is. And, um, but then it's about also defining the readership, what kind of readership you want to uh, touch not academics only, because you have practitioners, you have young students, young researchers, so, so it's a matter of thinking about how to combine text, images, what kind of writing you need to uh, create to uh, be, I would say, uh, as uh, under understandable and also as generous as possible without being too picky into the details. And uh, because we need to, to, to share and spread this work and uh, of course, it's frustrating to, to sit on so many hours, so many days of writing, of collecting documents, of putting these things together. And this thing at the moment is only in a couple of shelves in the department and the University of Reading. And I'm planning to, to, to make hopefully a digital version of the PhD itself, but um, for me, it's just a compromise. And uh, this is why also um, we, we need to think together about w what would be the best way to, to publish things, to publish articles, even some kind of diaries of research. I, I mean, the, the, the sideways of research as very important, not the distillation of the research, the beautiful academic paper. Um, so um, I have plenty of ideas, but I don't have plenty of time. So this is why also just to, 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 yeah, to relink with what Thomas was saying, we can be, of course, both retrospective and prospective at the same time, and we can invent new ways of sharing um, historical research without emulating the uh, academic model. Voilà. Ah, Petra is ready. Well, maybe for this um, toolbox or workbench, as you mentioned, we should just look um, not, not really far away from our disciplines because um, there's a really good example. Yeah, we are complaining all the time that we are a young discipline in, in sense design methods were defined, you know, in 60s, basically, you know, the design schools are around 400 years. Um, and we see merging disciplines which ever, which actually overtook us. You know, if you look at service design, everybody's doing service design. Why? Because the tools and methods are so widely available. You know, they got publicized. Uh, people made them open to everybody. You know, it's an emerging discipline which got some credits now. I think in it's basically the last 15 years the whole field developed. I know it's. You know, we can make another discussion on that if service design is something new or it's basically design as we know it, you know, and we define it as design. But in, in really in the case of tools and methods and everything, I think it's a really nice revival um, and really good example how methods are picked up and used on the workshops and through education and on real projects which are applied and have results and they are changing the world, really. If uh, anybody wants to raise a remark and ask a question, it's still possible, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, we we just yeah we, I, we into, into the conclusion. Making uh, public statements that will come to haunt us later. We need to be brave and bold because uh, we're right on the cusp. It's a really interesting moment where uh, now there is. Uh, enough of a community. I mean, you said, oh, 10, 10, 2010, where could I do this research? And you could count people really active in a very small room. But actually now there is a substantial community uh, internationally, globally, of people who are active in research uh, uh, or are interested in doing 
things. Uh, if you go to Thailand, there's a new M, 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 M what is it? Uh, uh, mass communication uh, program that has research elements in it. There's discussions from with people in Malaysia who are interested in this. There's nothing specific typographic running the way you, you might think now, but there are people who have their ears on the ground that they're trying to do things and so on. We've mentioned Colombo a couple of times with Sumantri, uh, who is very active there and also has an institutional environment in which to work. So I think we're at the level where we now have critical mass because it's impossible for any one person to do anything, but a lot of things are possible when you're talking about 20, 30, or 50 people who are gently pushing in the same direction. Uh, the other thing that's important is that there's a bunch of relatively young people around, and in this I mean young in the stages of life. The 50-somethings and the 60-somethings are not the pioneers. Uh, because they have big desks in front of them, they need to run a department or run a school and half their time is spent in meetings and budgets and committees and so on. Uh, so they might have policy ideas, such as you can't do a lot of stuff. Uh, but if you're in your 30s, you have the skills, you have a network, you have energy, you're not completely burnt out with life yet, uh, and you can take some risks because you've got 20, 30, 40 years ahead of you that you can see and say, oh, I'm going to build my career around this thing. Uh, I have the, the luxury, maybe, of having four non-permanent jobs uh, and give it a go and see where these things take. If you're 55, 60, you don't have enough time ahead to try the, I'll try the four jobs and see which one works out kind of thing. It's too late. Uh, so the fact that we have the substantial community of people who, who both have a network and experience, but also have the capacity personally to take risks, uh, puts us at exactly the right moment to create frameworks that allow this community to actually do more. The people who want to set up new courses or uh, do new programs or to help people like Katarina to fight her fight with the institution to build up the PhD program or the people in Israel now who are right on a turning point and maybe it's a coin toss and I don't know which way the coin will fall but actually maybe the next round of instructions coming down uh, will be uh, yes let's try this research thing and then it won't be the people my age who are doing anything it will be the 30 somethings who are doing something because they can now build their career on this let's try this research studies thing and see where that leads so I think what the obligation for the older amongst us, and I mean older in terms of experience, not age, but usually they come together, uh, is to build a framework. Uh, a framework that enables collaboration, that enables the, some sort of publication of outputs, not just the final things, but also the stuff that you were mentioning, the intermediate stuff, the resources, the training material, uh, the, the errors as much as the successes, the, the, the bits where somebody talks about were they wasted too much time in doing something? Uh, or how did they deal with the problem of, I was going down this route and I found nothing? Or uh, I went into a basement and I found the box with what was his name, I forget his name, right? And suddenly it changes uh, the whole direction of your research. That kind of stuff is really valuable and it is central to how we're working. And I think this is the, the best contribution we can make in sitting together around the metaphorical table and trying to see how can we take advantage of being in a relatively peaceful, relatively well-funded environment that still puts a, puts a bit of money and time in culture. Uh, because we can complain about our countries all we want, but actually being in Europe comes with a huge privilege in this respect, that it is possible to get some funding for things like that. Uh, and then once we create something that might work first at the more regional uh, sort of scale, we try it out. Then it's something that if you think it probably can scale up very easily. And then you can provide a platform that will work in Mongolia and Colombo and Myanmar and Malaysia and so on. Uh, and it will also give the people in those communities the, the argument, the armament, to go and have the conversations with their institutions and say, look, there is a network international of people working in this area. I'm not the only crazy person uh, in Kuala Lumpur talking about this typography thing. It's a thing. 
actually, and there's arguments for how this can move forward. So I think this is the, the right moment to be doing this, and it will not have an effect in a year. It's things that take a year or two or three to get together, uh, to put together, and maybe in five years you begin to see uh, the impact of these activities. But in 10 years' time, we will be in an environment where there's multiple hubs, where, which, as a matter of course, collect these resources, collect documents, collect material, create a network without necessarily having people needing to come to these events or to ATAPI and so on, just to build a network. And these are just part of the, the portfolio of what people can do. So basically what we wanted to achieve with this seminar is to, um, I would say, initiate the, this um, movement towards uh, this network. For the moment, we can only call it a network. We don't know yet how it, how it will look like, but the fact is um, it's really a step-by-step -step pro um, process, sorry, and because we need funding of course, and we need time again, and we need also to figure out how and when we can meet, who is willing to take part into this process of building this network. So uh, I guess uh, both uh, Atipai and Esa Damien are willing to collaborate uh, and to help making this thing happen. This is not uh, the end today. <laughs> we are seeding, we are spreading the seeds. And uh, so once we have processed this seminar because once the videos will be online and we'll see if we got some feedback, if people we are interested also to join and we need also to define some guidelines. So we are year zero basically, this is what we can say. So and step by step, year after year, we see when and how we can meet again, hopefully in three years, that would be a, a good cycle and see what's been, what has been done in the past three year, if we have more people coming up, it can happen here, it can happen in another city. So, so we are likely to, to be together, hopefully, and to define what we can do uh, on many levels. And uh, I think we, there's no one model. Now is the time to talk and now is the time to see what we can create together. So yeah, it's a new utopia somehow. But uh, we are in 2020, and the next 10 years are going to be very significant in this field, I think. We'll take silence as agreement to cooperate and support. <laughs> so OK. So if you allow me to close the proceedings, I will close the proceedings. Now, I, 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 okay, I need to think of uh, uh, lots of people um, at IPI for uh, um, yeah, agreeing to, to make it happen through the, the working seminar, because we've been talking about that, Jerry and I, for more than one year, so, and uh, we finally made it. And uh, Esa Damien and his, uh, uh, its whole team of, um, yeah, workers in many ways. So everyone work really hard on any level to make it happen from head to the slightly bottom, <laughs> I would say. Um, the students, of course, uh, is that type people. So you have plenty of food to take home. <laughs> if you only if you want to eat, <laughs> but uh, and. Um, yeah, thank you uh, for your involvement in um, setting up the exhibition, uh, finishing the projects on time. Uh, I hope you, you got inspired by this seminar and more things will happen uh, in the near future here. Um, the audience, of course. Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking time. And, uh, hmm? Yeah, 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 that last, no, the best. At the, yeah. <laughs> Just the audience, I mean, people who, I mean, it was a short time between announcing the seminar and um, this date, so uh, I appreciate that some people made uh, many kilometers sometimes to join us for this uh, event. Okay. And, of course, all the speakers, 
who uh, took their time and who prepared all these great presentations. So we managed uh, to, to, yeah, to, to wrap it up in, in a very good way. Uh, and I want to thank Samuel, who is filming uh, the whole thing for two days. <laughs> and um, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. Of course, he's still in front of me here. Yeah, thank you very much, Florian, for accepting, taking pictures of the whole thing for today. So, thank you very much. We should engrave your name in, in this room. <laughs> <laughs> if you agree only. And um, see you sooner or later, okay? Thank you. Thank you.